Now that we have a convolutional neural network trained to recognize the spoken word stop, we're ready to use it. While we've been working with Keras and TensorFlow in Jupyter Notebook, we can finally turn our attention to TensorFlow Lite. We started by first collecting data. In this case, it was just downloading audio files from a Google project. Next, we extracted features from the audio files. Specifically, we converted the raw audio into its MEL frequency sepstral coefficients. We then used these coefficient terms to train a convolutional neural network. Now that we have a fully trained model, we can finally deploy it to our target device. Because machine learning algorithms are normally computationally expensive, they're usually run on large computers and servers. However, our model is small and simple enough that we can run it on a Raspberry Pi. But first, we need to convert it to a TensorFlow Lite model. Right now, our model exists as a group of numbers and commands in a file on our computer. We need to create a quick Python script that converts this model into a TensorFlow Lite model. A TensorFlow Lite model is stored in a special format called a flat buffer, which shrinks the size of the model file and allows us to access parts of it serially without first needing to copy the whole thing to memory. We can then copy this TensorFlow Lite model over to our Raspberry Pi. From there, we need to add a microphone to the Raspberry Pi in order to capture audio. It will constantly be listening to everything and converting every second of captured audio to the MEL frequency sepstral coefficients, or MFCCs. Those MFCCs will then be fed to our model. We'll use the model to make predictions based on the MFCCs and attempt to classify what was heard. Because we're attempting to infer things from unseen data, this process is known as inference. Our model will then give us the probability that it heard our wake word as opposed to anything else. If that probability is over some threshold, say 50%, we can assume that the wake word was heard. In a new Jupyter Notebook, import Keras and TensorFlow Lite. We'll specify the location and file name of the Keras model we made in the last episode, which is saved as a .h5 file in the same directory as this notebook. We'll also want to specify the output TensorFlow Lite file. In a new cell, we'll use Keras to load the model from the file. We then create a new converter object from TensorFlow Lite and pass it our file. We call the convert function and save the output, which is a flat buffer containing our model. Finally, we save it to a new file. If we take a look in File Explorer, we can see how much smaller the TF Lite model file is compared to the original H5 model file. This can help tremendously in resource-constrained devices like embedded Linux and microcontrollers. Here is a flowchart showing how we're going to make this work in real time. We want to have a buffer that's a second long containing raw audio data from the microphone. We convert that raw audio into its MFCCs, which are fed into the inference engine that contains our TensorFlow Lite model. The inference engine spits out a number that essentially gives us the probability it thinks the section of audio contains the word stop. This section does not contain stop, so we should see some low probability. Since it doesn't meet our threshold, we simply do nothing. We then slide the window over by half a second and compute the MFCCs again. To do this in real time, we simply shift the second half of the buffer to the first half and put the newly captured 0.5 seconds of audio into the second half. Since this window still doesn't contain the full target word, we won't do anything again. We shift the window one more time, and this time, the MFCCs should more closely match what the model is expecting. As a result, we should ideally see a probability over 0.5. Because the inference engine gave us something over our threshold, we can trigger an action. In this case, we'll just flash an LED to show that the wake word was detected. This particular USB microphone should work out of the box. If not, I recommend taking a look at the USB audio cards with a Raspberry Pi tutorial on Adafruit's site to see how to set it up. I'm going to make a new directory on the Raspberry Pi that holds this Python program and the TensorFlow Lite model file. Use whatever means you want to copy the file from your main computer to the Raspberry Pi. I'll use SSHFS that I have running on Windows. You'll also need to install TensorFlow Lite on the Raspberry Pi. First, check to see which version of Python you're running. It needs to be 3.5, 3.6, or 3.7 at the time this video is made. Head to the TensorFlow Lite Quick Start Guide and copy the wheel file URL corresponding to your processor and Python version. For the Raspberry Pi 3, we'll need the ARM32 version. In a terminal, use pip to download and install the wheel file. In a new Python script, let's import sound device numpy, scipy.signal, time it, speech features, and GPIO, which is unique to the Raspberry Pi. We'll also want to import the interpreter from the TF Lite runtime package. Then, let's define some parameters. 
We'll use the debug flags to print stuff to the console. I'll start by enabling the output accuracy number from the neural network. We'll also add an LED and resistor to board pin 8. We can adjust the threshold probability here. I'll leave it at 50% for wake word matching. Next, let's have the recording duration and window stride be the same at 0.5 seconds. I've noticed that this microphone needs at least 44.1 kHz sampling rate to work, so we'll keep it at 48 kHz as we need our resample rate of 8 kHz to divide it evenly. We'll keep it at one channel and use 16 MFCCs just like in training. Finally, we'll need to point the script to the TF Lite model file. We'll create a NumPy array to act as a buffer for our sampled audio data. For this example, we'll just have the Raspberry Pi blink in LED, so we'll set up the GPIO in output mode. To use TensorFlow Lite, we first need to create an interpreter object and give it a path to the TF Lite model file. We then need to have it allocate tensors from that model. If we want to see the shape of the input and output tensors, we can get those details from the interpreter and then print them out. Because we trained our model on audio samples with an 8 kHz sample rate, we need to downsample. To avoid aliasing, we first need to low-pass filter the audio. Together, the process of filtering and downsampling is known as decimation. So, we use SciPy's decimate function to do that for us. Note that it can only decimate a signal by an integer factor, which is why we need to first sample in 48 kHz as it's divisible by 8000. If this microphone let us sample in 8 kHz directly, I'd be doing that instead, but it didn't seem to work that way. To use sound device to sample raw audio from a connected microphone, we need to define a callback. This function gets called every 0.5 seconds once we start the sound device recording process. We'll start by making sure the LED is off and, for our own curiosity, we'll take a timestamp. Next, we'll handle any errors by sound device and then remove the second dimension that seems to come with the recorded samples that are passed to us in the callback. After that, we call our decimate function in order to downsample from 48 kHz to 8 kHz. Because we want to run inference on the last second of audio, up to and including this new set of half-second audio, we move the samples in the second half of the window array to the first half, and then put our new section of audio into the second half. We use the Python speech features library to compute the MEL frequency sepstral coefficients using the exact same parameters as we did in the feature extraction episode. We need to transport the MFCC array just like we did during feature extraction. Now that we have the features, we can make a prediction, or inference, from the model. We need to reshape the MFCC array a bit so that it fits into the expected input tensor and then assign it to the intensor variable. We can then set the input tensor for the interpreter. We call the invoke method when we want to actually run inference and have our model classify the MFCC features we extracted from live data. After that, we get the output tensor, which contains the prediction value from the neural network. Since it's a single value for us, we can extract it from the array and compare it to our threshold. If it's over the threshold, we turn on the LED, which will be turned off in another half second when this callback runs again. Based on our debug flags, we can either print the output of the neural network or the time it took to extract features and make a prediction. Finally, to start the actual recording process, we call input stream from within sound device and pass it the parameters we defined earlier. Once this begins to run, it will automatically call the callback function every 0.5 seconds. We'll just have it do nothing in a while true loop while it waits for the audio buffer to fill. When you run this program, you should see the output of the inference engine appear every 0.5 seconds. It appears to be a little high for something that's silent. If you remember back in the first episode, we took out background noise from the training and validation sets. As a result, the model doesn't know what to do with samples that contain no spoken words. Notice that when I'm speaking, the model is a little more sure that it's not the target word, as it was trained on a variety of other words. Finally, when I say stop, it should be above 0.5 and trigger our action. I'll say stop again so you can see the LED flash. I'll change the program to print the time it takes to compute the MFCCs and inference instead of the inference output. When we run it again, you can see that it takes around a quarter of a second to compute MFCCs and run it through our model. Note that this isn't exact computation time. Since this is Linux, other threads could be jumping in and messing up our measurement. However, if we need to spend about a quarter of a second every time we collect a new sample, which is every half second, that's about 50% of our CPU being dedicated to running this detection algorithm. 
There are a number of ways we can fix these issues and make the model faster and more robust. For example, we should really be training with background noise so that it handles silence better. Then we might want to consider looking at a different set of features as calculating MFCCs is very computationally expensive. And finally, maybe we consider writing a multi-threaded application since many newer Raspberry Pis come with multiple cores. One thread could be in charge of sampling raw data from the microphone, another could be converting that raw data into its features, and then a third could be taking those features and running the inference engine. This could be the start of creating your very own wakeware device. Instead of making a home assistant, let's try making a new type of emergency cutoff for machines. So if I were to yell the word stop, my mill would immediately lose power. It obviously needs some work, but this could be the beginnings of a secondary safety feature in case someone couldn't reach the emergency stop button on a piece of equipment. I hope these videos have helped you get a better understanding of how to train a neural network model and then deploy it on an embedded device. We're just scratching the surface of Edge AI here. So if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe and happy hacking. <laughs>